Hello, and welcome to this course on the Soothe2 plugin. This course is designed to get you up to speed with everything you need to know about this plugin and how it can be used in your productions. So at first, we'll cover the different features and different things that this plugin has to offer, and then at the very end of the course, we'll have some practical sound design examples that I think do a really good job of showing off what this plugin is capable of doing. So this series will also be great if you've been on the fence about purchasing this plugin and want to know a little bit more about how it works and how it can be used. Um, and if you haven't ever used this plugin, I highly suggest checking it out because I think it's a real game changer. I would consider this plugin to be right up there with plugins like FabFilter Pro-Q and Serum that are basically essential to your production workflow. I think this plugin fits in as one of those essential devices that you really should check out if you haven't already. So I'll be calling it Soothe throughout the course, just because it's a little bit shorter. This is the second version of this plugin. They went in and improved it a bit. But what this plugin is, is a dynamic resonance suppressor. So the way I like to view this plugin is almost like a dynamic EQ, but it's automatically taking individual resonances and frequency bands and dynamically adjusting to the source material that you're feeding into the device. So it enables you to get advanced control of your audio and really advance control over the individual resonant harmonics and peaks that are happening inside of your samples or audio material. But it does so in a super clean way that sounds very natural, whereas normal dynamic EQ can sometimes sound really strange and make your audio sound all phasey, but this sounds super, super natural. And this is because instead of a single band being adjusted like you have in an EQ, where a band like this would be moving up and down or dynamically responding to the audio material, you're actually getting tons of individual resonances and harmonic cuts that are all sort of adapting to the audio as it's being fed into the device. So what I want to do first, just kind of cover some of the basic features, how this is laid out, the preset browser, and then kind of some resizing options and different sections on this window. So the first thing that you see is this interface right here, the main section of the device. This is the frequency window. This is basically where you set this device to pay attention to. So if you want to pay attention to low frequencies or high frequencies or individual resonances, you set that from this window. Over here, you have some more advanced controls, which we'll dive into a bit later. And then you have the depth control, which controls the intensity of your effect. It's also some more advanced controls, which we'll touch on a little bit later. But just know for now, this is basically the intensity of the effect you're applying to the given frequencies. So I want to talk a little bit about this preset browser because I think this is actually where this plugin really does excel. Normally presets are not really that great on a lot of plugins, but here they're really, really good starting points for a different audio material. So if I wanna to go to my preset browser, I can click on this. You'll notice that I have some save settings where I can open from files as well if I have third-party presets that I wanna load into my device. There is a search bar that enables me to search my presets. There's a factory default, a user configured default setting and then some user presets if you have any loaded into the device. And then you have these different folders. So I think this is really where this is actually really great. So for example, vocals, we get all of these different vocal presets, which are from some very big mixing engineers. So Dave Pensato, Josh Goodwin, uh, Joe Ciccarelli as well. And these are really good starting points for vocals. So you can kind of sift through these, find a really good starting off point, and then go in and individually adjust it depending on your source material. If you want to load the preset, you just click on it, and then we click out of this window, and you can see it has loaded in the preset into my device. If I want to choose another preset, I could click on another one, and it would load it up. If I wanted to set this as my default, I could go click on this preset, hit set as default, and then every time I loaded this up, it would change to that preset. Additionally, on this top bar, we have some controls for undo and redo, which could be helpful if we're working on a sound, we make a change and we don't like the change, we can undo that or we can redo the change, pretty standard copy and paste settings. We also have an AB control, so I can basically audition between two different presets. So let's say we wanted to try out this vocal preset, we could click on B, maybe load up another vocal preset, and then I could cycle between these two presets to see which one I like better. So this could be really helpful whenever you're trying to start off on a sound. Let's say you're processing a vocal or a drum set or whatever it may be, and you want to just try out a couple of presets to see what's working well. You could use these to quickly audition those. Then we have a help window. If you click on this, there's a tutorial that's built into the device, which I also recommend checking out. It's quite helpful. There's the manual, some shortcuts that are available. So if you want to see what the different shortcuts are on either Mac or PC or whatever system you're on, you can click on this and it will tell you those helpful shortcuts. You can check out the website from the manufacturer or some information about the device itself. 
If we click on this, you can see that we have some advanced settings, so we can disable the OpenGL graphics. So if you're experiencing any issues with the high-end graphics that are happening on this device, you can disable that to optimize your performance a little bit. You can also see that there is a new version available. So if I want to go in and update this, I can hit download and it'll update the device, which I'm going to do later after this video. I just wanted to leave that there so you could see that this is how you load up the updates into the device. You also have some adjustments to the frequency graph if you want to look more generally at the decibel readings, or if you want to go into a bit more fine detail. So you kind of zoom into the audio graph. I'll just leave that at as default. But just know that those settings are available. You can disable the help window, which I have done. So that whenever you mouse over something, it'll give you information about what it does. Uh, but for now, just so we don't have a bunch of pop-ups, I went in and disabled it. You can have an automatic band listen. So whenever you click on a band, it'll basically enable you to listen to that band or you can hear the unprocessed input whenever you're listening to individual frequency bands. We'll talk about those in a bit more detail a bit later, but just know there are some settings available if you want to go in and adjust things. The other helpful thing that is also nice on this device is you can actually resize it. So if we click on this, you've got a couple of different options. We can make it very small for on a very large screen, and we have lots of different plugins loaded up. You can make it large, or you can make it super big and have a giant interface, uh, which can also be quite nice depending on the screen size that you're working with. So that is a quick look at kind of the basic interface of the device, what these different parts do, and then also the browser, which I do highly recommend kind of checking out some of these presets because they are quite good and they're actually really great starting points. So it's kind of the way that a lot of them were designed. So they're very helpful. Definitely check them out whenever you're working on different source material. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we'll actually jump into some sound examples and show you what this device sounds like on audio material.